Good morning, church. Good morning. Oh, great to see everybody in the house. Welcome to all of you watching online. We're so glad that you're here. If you're brand new with us, download our church app and get connected. There's so much coming up this month. I mean, check out some of what's coming up. We have Colorado Praise this Thursday and Friday. If you've, if you've never prayed during this 24-hour period, I challenge you to do that. I want to talk about that a little bit later as well. Men's breakfast coming up uh, here at 8. Meal pack next Sunday. So here's something we haven't talked about yet. At 1130, like when service is over next week, uh, we'll do set up and have a lunch as well. It officially doesn't start until 1230 to 3. So we're a half hour longer because we're making we're preparing a lot more many more meals so uh, for those of you who would love to help set up that's at 1130 child dedication uh, register for that we have gifts we'll get you up here on stage and take a picture of you and pray over the kids and over your family hosts uh, we have connect groups coming up if you would uh, just talk to somebody on the way out they're going to open up their home and they're going to be a host home to be able to go over a bible study and kind of lead that and uh, it's as simple as inviting your neighbors over and following. We have a discussion guide after every message. You just go through that discussion guide and, uh, and pray for one another and do that for four weeks, six weeks, or whatever. If you'd love to do that, uh, let us know. Uh, and uh, groups will be opening up here in October. Uh, outreach events, there's other outreach events uh, that you can get connected with. And really, um, our app is the most immediate way. If you'd like to receive all the information we'll request our weekly email and do that um, as we prepare our hearts to give I want to put up a verse of scripture up on the screen it's great memory verse uh, for those of you uh, who know this it says trust in the Lord with a little bit of your heart no I doesn't say that trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. So on a scale from 1 to 10, 10 being fully submitted, where are you on that scale? I mean, just think about that. On a scale from 1 to 10, it says, in all your ways submit to him. How many ways are you submitting to him? One, two, three, maybe. And think about that when it comes to your finances as well. In fact, if you know, I know some people are like, that's all the church talks about is money. Oh, no, it's, it's not. <laughs> but it's part of it. God wants us to submit in all ways. So just think about that. Carry that with you today. Carry that with you through this week and just think of where are you on that scale of submitting to God. So as we prepare our hearts to give, let me uh, pray over us. Would you pray with me? Father, we give you thanks for uh, Jesus submitting all to you and I just pray oh God that we would evaluate our life and see where we stand on this scale that I know you would want us to be tens you just want us to go all the way with you and I pray that even in this matter of giving that you would uh, teach us uh, that we'd be able to research that what you've said about that in particular I thank you for the givers I thank you for what it means to your kingdom uh, I was able to go to church years ago and to hear the gospel of Jesus and it's because somebody gave somebody uh, helped the church get established a building there and I just pray whether it's here locally or, or across the world that we would be faithful in uh, spreading the gospel of Jesus and we pray in his name amen amen early bird or night owl early bird or night owl Stand up and greet somebody, introduce yourself, and tell them whether or not you're an early bird or a night owl. Night owl. I knew it. I knew it. I know, me too. Even when I get up early, I'm just in a fog for hours. Early bird. Early bird 
There you go. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Good to see you, buddy. Glad you introduced yourself. Okay, all you night owls, let me hear you. Yeah, there's a lot of you in here. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. If you're joining us, like, and you can type it in the chat, too. Tell us whether you're a night owl or early bird. Um, this is our, we're wrapping up this series, Ask the Pastor. And uh, it's been really challenging trying to answer and look at some of your questions. And uh, part of the reason for this series is because of Bible illiteracy is really at an all-time high here in America. A survey was taken. I mean, listen to this. Uh, less than half Americans could, were able to name the first five books of the Bible. Only a third could name all four Gospels. Only half knew that John the Baptist was not one of the 12 apostles. One third did not know that Isaiah was in the Old Testament. And this one was kind of crazy. Six percent believed that Joan of Arc was Noah's wife. I know. So Kenneth Bairding, professor of New Testament at Biola, said this up on the screen. Christians used to be known as people of the book. They memorized it, meditated on it, talked about it, and taught it to others. We don't do that anymore. And in a very real sense, we're starving ourselves to death. God wants us to be filled up on his word, to, to eat the rich meat of his word. Second Timothy says this, be diligent to present yourself approved of God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The New International Version says, correctly handle the word of truth. So I hope, it's been my prayer for this series, that you be better prepared by just knowing some of the answers to all these questions. Now, if you're new with us, this isn't a typical message series. In fact, we've dealt with 24 questions in this series, and this week today, I want to deal with one more in particular. I've combined some, and they're really, uh, well, hey, if you're ready, say I'm ready. Are you with me? Okay, we're ready. Let's dive in. What does the Bible say about knowing God's will? That's the overarching theme. Uh, what's the Bible say about knowing God's will? And, and the questions combined, I came up with this question. How can I know when God is speaking to me? How can I know when God's speaking to me? So I'm going to attempt to answer this question by talking about prayer today. And I think the problem for so many of us, I would guess, is that we are praying way too safe. I mean, I've heard a lot of prayers over the years, and there are three typical prayers that a child would pray, and one is if they're in school and the teacher has a pop quiz, oh, it's time to pray right? Or you get in trouble at school, oh, it's time to pray, or you pray over a meal. I want to put up here, I've heard some of these prayers. God is great. God is good. Let us thank him for this food. You got to rhyme, rhyme that. Good food, good meat, good God. Let's eat. You may have heard those. I know. <laughs> and uh, sometimes our grown-up prayers are not very different than our childhood prayers. Are they not? Because they can be self-centered. They can be very occasional, very general and incredibly safe, for example, uh, we will pray, God be with us. And, and we know in God's word, he says, I'll never leave you or nor forsake you. I am with you always. But we pray, God, would you just be with us? Or we pray when we're traveling, keep us safe. Give us traveling mercies, O Lord. Or I remember praying after I became a Christian at age 20. I didn't know much about prayer. We had gone, a group of us, uh, to get ice cream we got the ice cream and somebody prayed a prayer similar to this. God bless this banana split with all the hot fudge, whipped cream. Bless it to the nourishment of our bodies in Jesus' name. I knew as a young Christian this, that was pushing it when it came to that type of a prayer. I think one of the greatest things that we can do for our prayer life, for our life, is to pray faith-filled, radical prayers. And we're going to look at an example of that today from 1 Samuel chapter 3. And we're going to see a faith-filled, radical prayer from a little boy. And before we read the verse of Scripture, the primary verse, the passage, I want to give you some background. Who is Samuel? We're talking about this young boy named Samuel. He's 11 or 12 years old right now. And if you can imagine a sixth grade boy praying this radical, faith-filled prayer, uh, young Samuel worked for the priest Eli. And Eli's life was falling apart. He hadn't disciplined his sons, who were the priests. He hadn't led them well, and he was sinning against God. 
And one day, this young sixth grade boy, while he was sleeping, he was in bed asleep, and he heard, Samuel, Samuel. And he woke up, and he thought, well, it must be Eli. So he ran down the hall to Eli's room and said, Eli, did you call me? And he said, no, no, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. And a little bit later, after he'd gone to sleep, Samuel was awakened. Samuel, Samuel, well, it must be Eli. He ran down. Are, are you calling me, Eli? And no, no, go back to bed. A third time, Samuel, Samuel, he gets up and goes in. Well, Eli knew what was going on in that moment. He said, you know what? God must be speaking to you. So here's what you need to do if you want to hear God's voice. If you are called again, Samuel, Samuel, I want you to wake up and you tell God, God, your servant is listening. And Samuel was indeed going to pray this faith-filled radical prayer. Let's look at 1 Samuel 3.10 and we read about this. And the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, speak, your servant is listening. Speak to me, God. I want to hear your voice. And God spoke to Samuel. So before we get into what God spoke to Samuel that day, who would like to play Bible trivia? For a, if you get this right, for an extra $500 and an extra room in your mansion in heaven, you can have anybody, right, if you can get this right, if you can get it right, okay? We had a winner in the first the service, all right? How many times in the Bible did God speak and give an assignment and his assignment was easy? Think about all the stories that you can re recall in the Bible where God spoke to somebody and they said, oh God, that's easy, that's no problem, we'll do that. I know, I would guess, I, I, I can't find a single time where God gave an assignment that was actually easy. I mean, t think, think of Noah. Noah, I want you to build an ark. What's an ark, Lord? Well, it's a really big boat, you know, a football and a half size of a boat. Not only that, I'm going to flood the earth, and you're going to be responsible single-handedly to repopulate the earth. Oh, that's okay, God. That sounds easy. I'll start on that right after lunch. Or Jonah. Jonah, I'm going to send you to the most evil, wicked place on earth to tell them repent or die. Oh, that's, that's easy, Lord. Or to a young teenage girl. Hey, Mary, you're going to give birth to a baby boy, and he's going to be the son of God. Oh, that's easy, Lord. I mean, hashtag blessed, hashtag son of God. No, every time God spoke, he would give an assignment. It always challenged somebody's faith, and it stretched people's faith. So if you have the courage today to pray, speak, Lord, your servant is listening, well, his voice might convict you. His voice might challenge you. His voice might change your life today to have a greater faith. So when young Samuel says, speak, Lord, I'm listening, God didn't say, unfortunately, hey, now that I got your attention, I just want you to know I'm going to bless the earth. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say, oh, hey, young Samuel, that girl in your youth group, you're going to marry her. You're going to have two children, a dog, no cats, and you're going to make six figures, and you're going to be a YouTube influencer. No, he didn't say that. What did God tell this young boy that challenges faith? Well, hey, Eli, the one that you're serving today, is sinning against me, and I want you to be faithful to take this message to him because I want to judge his house. It was a radical prayer. It was a faith-filled prayer. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. So I want to encourage you today, do not pray, speak, Lord, unless you're prepared to listen and to do what God would have you to do. So let me just back up a minute and look broadly at what is prayer what, what is prayer? Prayer is simply communicating with God. And what does communication take? Communication doesn't just take one-way communication. It takes two-way communication. And I would say, I would argue that God's done way more when I've listened rather than when I've talked to him. So prayer isn't just about talking to God. It's about listening to God as well. And I wonder if some of you if God has ever said to you, enough already, you told me what you want me to do, now hold on a minute and get, let me have a moment to respond back. Would you just shh for a moment so I can speak and so you can listen? In other words, God speaks, but do you listen? Our God is a God who communicates. 
So if you've ever asked this question or some form of the question, hey, how can I hear the voice of God? How can I know the will of God for my life? I want to answer this question by, by looking at three ways, three postures of prayer that, that we can take, that we can learn from young Samuel that will help us hear God's voice and to be able to know God's will for our life. So number one, if you're taking notes, if you're uh, filling out the outline on our church app, uh, the first thing is this. How can we hear the voice of God? Well, we need to be still before God. We need to pause and be still before God. And we're going to pause And be still before God. Isn't that something? Psalm 46 tells us how to do that. And let me tell you what it doesn't say. It doesn't say be frantic and know that I'm God. Or get your busy, busy, busy day on and know that I'm God. No, he doesn't say that. He doesn't say seek me on the goal and you'll experience me. No, Psalm 46 says be still and know that I am God. So we pause. We're still. And we know that he's God. So just, just consider this. When was the last time that you sat down and you spent an hour of your day binging on some movie channel? Or you spent an hour of your day reading a book? Or you spent an hour of your day just kicking back doing something that you liked? Maybe you went and exercised, whatever it was. You spent an hour of your day doing that. Well, when was the last time that you paused in your day and you sat down and you spent an hour? You shut everything off and you spent an hour listening to God. When was the last time? So to hear God's voice, we've got to slow down the pace and shut everything off if we're going to say, God, your servant is listening. Jesus said it like this. He said, and when you pray, do not pray like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. He goes on, and when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. He says this, but when you pray, what's he say? Go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who's unseen. Then your Father who sees what's done in secret will reward you. In other words, you got to find some place where you can have privacy with God. Mine's in my home office. And you take that time, and you go before your Heavenly Father, and you say, Speak, Lord. That is a faith-filled, radical prayer. And you might ask, well, if I do that, does God speak in an audible voice where, where I can hear him, kind of like the Allstate insurance guy speaking in King James language? Thou shalt break it up with him, for I have found thou a new person with a job and a 401k, and you're in good hands. I, I've never heard God speak. Uh, I've never heard him speak like that, in fact. But I promise, God wants to speak to you. And there are different ways that he does that. If you're taking notes, let's cover some of the ways. One of the most pri primary, solid, most reliable, important way is that God speaks to us through his word. The Bible says in Hebrews 4.12, God's word is living and active. Why and how? Because it speaks to us. We read it. And we're guided by it. We read it and God comforts us through it. We read it and we're, we're given wisdom to take on this earth. It's God's living word. We're to be people of the book we read earlier. And, uh, and I'll, if you tell me, hey, God, he, well, I haven't heard from God lately. Well, I'll tell you, probably not spending too much time in his word because his word speaks to us. It's living and active. Uh, how else does God speak to us? He speaks through people. He does. How does he do that? Well, God might speak to you through a message like this. He, he may speak to you when you're listening to music. He, he may speak to you through people, through, through a close friend. Uh, I can't tell you how many times that, that God speaks to me through my wife, Denise, and it's so annoying. You know, I mean, it happens usually when I have a freak out moment. Anybody ever have a freak out moment? And what's my, what's my wife say? Greg, she says, she say, Greg, you know, God's never let you down yet, has he? And I'm like, no, Denise, thank you for reminding me that. 
but I had this freak out moment, and, and, and you know, she, she quotes scripture. My, my wife will quote scripture to me. Can you believe that? It's like, you know, in freak out moment, she says, Greg, the Bible says don't worry about anything. My prayer and supplication, you pray before God. And I'm like, that's my favorite verse. Why are you quoting me my favorite verse? I know what it says. But God will speak to you. You need to listen to your spouse sometimes because he'll speak through your spouse. So God speaks to us through people, through people who have wise counsel, godly people, people of the book. Listen to those people. He'll also speak through circumstances. It's really amazing how God does this. I mean, it's like, you know, there's no way that something that you want to happen happens. And then God opens up a door. And you're like, wow, God just opened up a door for me. Or you really want something to happen, but a door closes, you know, and you wonder, how did that happen? You know, was that of God? And some of you ought to thank God for a closed door because you were dating that closed door once and you wanted it. And 10 years later, you know what that closed door looks like. So you thank God that somebody else walked through that door. Thank you, God, that you closed doors and that you opened doors. (laughs) I can't tell you how often I've seen this in my own life. I think I'm going to store just to pick up something, but God has me there to bump into somebody, and it's like, yeah, I know we haven't been to church all summer. It's uh, been a really busy summer, and God speaks to them. Yeah, God wants you to be a part of the family, part of the body. There you will grow. I mean, Christ died for the church. Come on back. And God speaks to them through circumstances. God will also speak to you through his spirit, through his spirit. And for those of you who are like, I don't even know what that means. I'm just coming to church for the first time. I don't know anything about this. How can, we, how can God be living in somebody? How do we know how Christ is living, how his spirit is living in Christ's followers? Well, Peter says this in Acts 2.38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive what? The gift of the Holy Spirit. So as a baptized believer in Christ, it tells us right here that we have the indwelling gift of the Spirit. This is how the Apostle Paul can say this in Galatians 5. So I say what? Walk by the Spirit and be led by the Spirit because God's Spirit communicates to our spirit. And that's why when we ask God, guide me, lead me, speak to me, you'll have the most unusual promptings at various times. And you won't be able to explain it sometimes. You know, you'll just sit back and go, I I don't even know why, but I just feel led to do this thing. And and you might even ask, how do I know this prompting is of God? Well, if God prompts you to be a blessing to somebody, that's probably not the devil (laughs) that's doing that. Like if God says, oh, I I just feel prompted to give something, that's probably of God. Or I feel like God's prompting me to be an encouragement to somebody. Well, that's probably of God. Or I don't know, but I feel prompted to call. Or I I felt prompted to pray for somebody. I felt prompted to pray for somebody. And at 6 a.m. this morning, we're communicating back and forth. Thank you for praying for me because of that prompting. He leads us by his spirit. And this is the bottom line. The more you listen to God's voice, the more you're going to be able to recognize it the more you're going to be able to discern it. So the first way to hear from God and to learn about his will is to be still before God. And number two, the the second posture of prayer that we're looking at from young Samuel is be willing. Be willing. Be willing to do whatever God speaks to you. So you got to be willing. I don't know about you, but sometimes my prayers, I feel like they just sometimes bounce off the ceiling or it feels like I'm just babbling. I'm just giving these wish lists before God. God, you know, I just want you to do this. You're a holy God. You, you do everything. God, will you just do this one thing? What if instead, before going before God with our wish list, that we would go before God with a blank sheet of paper? God, speak to me. And then we're going to listen And we're going to fill out that paper. God, what do you want to say to me? What do you want to show me? And then, even importantly, we're going to do what he tells us to do. I mean, uh, take for example a while back. I I really felt the weight of ministry just weighing me down. It's just like, you know, you just get in those spots sometimes. And and, uh, so I was reflecting upon Psalm 51, David's prayer. And it says this. 
God created me a pure heart. You know, renew a steadfast spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit, O Lord, to sustain me. That's a challenging prayer to pray. But if you pray a prayer like that and you're listening to God, he might just start rattling off all these things that you're going to be writing down on this paper. I'm like, okay, God, just stop with the top 10, will you? I mean, three is good enough, but 10, would you just please, let me just do these few. But what happened in that? Listening to God, well, the joy of ministry just started to flow back into my life. And I don't know what you need to pray and ask and listen to God for. Maybe it has to do with your marriage. It's tough right now, and you just pray, God, what is it that I can do? They're not following you right now, and I know that, but how can I love my spouse more? And, and you listen. You just wait and listen. You know, I just don't want to come to church, God. I want to be the church like you've talked about. How can I use my gifts in your church? And you just listen. God, what do I have to bless somebody with? Where do you want me to be generous? And then you listen. God, who is it today that needs encouragement from you? Show me, Lord. Speak. Your servant is listening. And let me add here, this is so important to get this part. Whatever you do. Remember to do what God told you to do before you go asking him for another word. I mean, why is it so often that we feel that we haven't heard from God? Well, I think because God's saying, remember what I told you last month? You haven't even done it yet. So go ahead and do that before you start asking to do something else. Be willing to do what God's put on your heart before you move on. How, are we, how, what, how do we posture ourselves to hear from God and to understand his will. Well, number one, we got to be still. Number two, we got to be willing. And number three, what are we going to be? Somebody say it. We're going to be ready. When God speaks, make sure you're ready to do what he says and what he shows you. Think about young Samuel, this young boy. He's working for Eli. He, he wants to honor this priest. And God says, Eli's not honoring me. And you've got to carry this message of judgment to him. Tell him, turn your heart back to me. So when you pray, speak, Lord. I'm listening. You got to remember, God's never given an assignment to somebody that's easy. So God may speak to you and reveal something about you that you've got to acknowledge. God, I know I'm sinning. God, I know I need to return back to you. God, I'm sorry. I repent. Or God may spur you to do something that you really don't feel qualified to do. God, I, I, I know you're leading me to teach in kids' zone, but uh, I'm, I'm scared to do this. I've never done it before. Or he wants to, you to use your talents on stage to, to sing or to play. Oh, oh, God, let me hear your voice. Or he's speaking to you to reach out to a coworker, to a boss, to a friend, to invite them to church. Or maybe he's leading you to forgive someone who doesn't deserve it. They've not asked for it, but he's saying you've got to release this and forgive them. It's an incredibly faith-filled prayer. Speak, Lord. Speak. Your servant is listening. Let's read Proverbs 3 to 6 again. Seek his will in all you do, and he will, what's he going to do? Show you which path to take. So, if you're ready... And you pray that prayer, you got to be ready to follow through with what he speaks to you. So if you've ever prayed, oh God, will you speak to me? How can I know your will? Let me give you three tangible ways this week, four tangible ways this week that you can allow God to speak to you. And uh, I just ask that you would do all four this week as you ask God to speak to you. Number one, if you have the courage to pray that prayer before you start every day this week for the next seven days, you pray, you get up and say, God, speak to me. You have my permission, God, to interrupt me. Show me what to do with my life. And you pray that prayer every single morning. And then when he speaks to you, you follow through with what he says. Number two, we have a prayer wall. What's a prayer wall? Well, you'll find it on your, on your app, on your phone, if you've downloaded that. It's also accessible through our website. We have our part of our brothers and sisters in this body. When they have a prayer request, they'll post that on there. I challenge you every day this week, open that up and pray. 
for those prayers every single day for the next seven days. Sign up this week to Colorado Praise. Uh, what's Colorado Praise? We've dedicated, we've, we've joined on with over 2,200 churches in Colorado to lift up prayer 24 hours a day every day of the month. And this is our day when we do it. I would challenge you, it takes more than just praying. There's a prayer guide you download, and when you go through that, you'll be praying longer than 30 minutes. Let's blow that thing up this week because there's too many people, and you'll fill up those slots. We've already talked about there's early birds. Who are the early birds? Who are the night owls? All right, we're going to meet in the middle. So those middle of the night times between midnight and 6 a.m., well, there's night owls and early birds. Jump on there and fill, fill those slots up because I don't want to have to set my alarm and get up at 3.30 because it's right in between, right? Let's get that covered. Let's blow that thing up and pray. This will totally enhance your prayer life if you do this. Number four, make a prayer list every day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The next seven days, write down your prayers. You can even write down if God answers them. My prayer life years ago was transformed by somebody challenging me to do this. And you write down these prayers. And I hope you can do it on a piece of paper. I started with a notebook. I now do it on the computer so I can write and rewrite and add when God answers that. So every day this week, make a prayer list. You know, I've, had, I've heard so many stories uh, from people over the years how God's spoken to them. And uh, I thought of this one this past week. And I, and I preached this at my cousin's funeral who died at 41 of cancer, too young, leaving behind a, a wife and three young girls. And uh, I remember Kim, Lonnie's wife, telling me how one day after Lonnie died, she was going to school to pick up the girls. And uh, she said, I just didn't know if I could hold on anymore. And she said, I was driving to the school, and I prayed, God, show me that you're up there. Show me that you're still in control. God, please answer this prayer. And she said, I turned into the school, and I couldn't believe my eyes what I saw. There was a repair truck sitting before the school sign, and on the side of the truck, it read this. <laughs> Miracle sign company and she took that as a word from God Kim I'm still up here I'm still in control pick up your girls I'll love you I'll nurture you I'll comfort you and he did there's some of you today you need a word from God maybe you need a miracle in your life today well pray the prayer speak Lord your servants listening and then you pause and you're still and you're willing and you're ready and then you hear his voice would you pray with me father I ask that you would take the topics that we've discussed throughout these few weeks and Lord that you would be able to minister hope and life through them to be able to hear your word and truth and I pray for understanding today that we would have a hunger for your word that we would be people of the book and that we'd understand that to all of our questions, we can find answers or principles in your word. And, and I pray that one of the reasons that we get so many things wrong in this life is because we don't know what you said about it. Or we don't follow through with what you've said about it and told us to do. And I know, Lord, for so many of us, we get so distracted by this world, find ourselves sometimes just going through the motions. And we haven't been intentional about growing our faith through prayer, through communicating with you. And I pray that um, all that changes this week and beyond this week as we set aside time every day to hear your voice, that we would take the time to be still, to be willing and ready to respond to what you say to us. I pray that we'd seek you through your word and through that daily time, making it a habit to be with you so we can correctly handle the word of truth. Father, I pray if there's anybody hearing my voice right now who, who needs Jesus, that they would take that step of faith to follow you. And I thank you for saving us 
from our sins. I thank you for Jesus being so faithful that he hit the 10 on submitting you, submitting to you in all ways. I pray that we would strive for that. I pray that for the one who needs salvation today, that, that they would just simply hear the truths of Scripture. And you tell us that those who believe and are baptized and call on the name of Jesus, that you're going to set them free, that you're going to set them free indeed. And I pray for that.